Welcome to worship on this glorious day that God has made. Though we are physically distant, we are interwoven in spirit by the blessing and grace of Jesus our Christ. This worship is created and presented by our Wisconsin Conference United Methodist Church Appoint of Cabinet. May our time together be filled with hope and promise. God's love is stronger than any challenges we face. Nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. As we praise God together, we give thanks for each and every God-given gift in our lives. This is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. As we come to worship, we may bring doubt, but let us claim faith. As we come, we may sense darkness uh, all around us because of uh, the challenge of the COVID situation. But let us claim the light. This is the Easter season. We are people of the resurrection. We claim that God is with us. Christ is risen. Let us worship the living God who is with us and who loves us. Amen. and the Lord of all that we have and all that we are. We worship you and offer ourselves before your presence with praise and thanksgiving for the abundant blessings of your love and grace. We gather today presenting ourselves in the shortness of the challenge of life and the joys of your blessing, even in the midst of COVID-19 pandemic. Open our eyes that we may see what you are doing. Open our hearts that we may understand the challenge that we are in. We are living in a time of uncertainty and desperation. Be present with us, O oh Lord. Guide us how to live. Show us how to love. Help us how to be faithful to you and to the work of your kingdom. We pray in the name of your Son, the Christ, our Lord. O Vanju, Vanju to Ju, that be to name, to Shahan, that Toyaka be more, that they lo name. 
Wa ji pe to pe a ha ka mo pe tu ken fi jo ka o ka cha jo te kong te do ke ka pu ji pe Wa ji pe mo pe tu ken fi jo ka pa jin la ta pe ye o ji tao i ya la ji jo Pe o ka cha jo te kong mong ke ka pu ji pe mo ke kang sha tao jo nya kang sha lu Wa ji ta ke pe lo ka mo ke pe pu ha ta ka tang tao la ji nu no Tha khai pe lu sha ko pe tao tao cho te te me ke pe na nu cha. Wang chui pe nyao cho lu sha ke pe chi pao ta sha pe ke jong le cha. Tha ka nyao jun jai pe. Tha ka cha pe lu neng. Tha ka kha pe ko pe pao shi lu. Tha ka pang pe ko pe zeng jeng ka. Ha ma sha cho cho ka te 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 na. Tai tha lu na chi su lu be. Amen. Hi. I'm Barb Serta Warner and I'm the district superintendent for the Northwest District. And my task this morning is to share a children's sermon with you and it's really my pleasure. The scripture for today is, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. And that's from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 12. And I've been thinking a lot about how do we tell each other that we love each other without using words. And one of the things that I thought about is how do we help each other? That's one way that we can show our love that Jesus has given us to others. And so I collected some items and um, to think about, I have some older clothes that I don't wear anymore that I'm going to share with some people that need clothes. Um, I have a note that I wrote that I'm sending to someone to let them know I care about them. And then I know um, some folks in my family and some friends have made some masks to distribute for folks. And so that's another way we can show people that we care and that we love them. And then last but not least, we can collect food items to share with others that need food. So there's lots of different ways that we can love others in the name of Jesus. Let's pray. Gracious God, we are so grateful to you that you love us. Help us to love others, to be caring, and to really live out our faith. In your name we pray. Amen. Good morning, church. Would you pray with me? Loving God, we are grateful for the gift of yet another day. We are grateful for the many ways in which you've blessed us, including the blessing of technology that allows us to share and worship together, even while we're apart. You are a great God and you have walked with your people through calamities from the beginning of time. And now, Lord, you walk with us and as you walk with us, you hear our joy, our joy for the budding of spring and all that it offers, our joys for the ways in which we can still connect, our joys for healing and the miracle of science, for food that is on our tables, for the freedom to worship you without having to hide for the many, many ways in which we are blessed, we give you thanks. And Lord, we also lift our sorrows. For we know that you walk through our sorrows. And our sorrows represent the loss of good things that we have had. We remember the people that we have lost. the love and the experiences that they have provided to us. The loss of being able to celebrate their lives as we had imagined we might. And Lord, we lift the sorrow we have for the loss of being able to celebrate milestones in ways that we would have hoped and imagined. Weddings, 
anniversaries, birthdays, graduations, and other events that bring us together. But Lord, we know that you're with us and give us new ways to celebrate and to connect. And for that, we give you thanks. And as you walk with us, also walk with those who we send into harm's way each day to provide for our safety and our health our doctors and nurses and respiratory therapists, those who clean rooms and ready them for new patients, those who test people, our National Guard, our Army and our others who put themselves in harm's way for us each day. Bless them and help them to know of your presence. Hear the prayers, Lord, that we've not named, but we know that you know our prayers better than we ourselves know them. We offer these prayers and all that we have and all that we are to you and to your glory. And now, Lord, as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, Help us to hear the words that you have to say to us today, that we may respond faithfully today and every day. We pray in the name of Jesus, who is our Christ. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 15 to 21. This comes from the message. If you love me, show it by doing what I've told you. I will talk to the Father, and he'll provide you another friend so that you will always have someone with you. This friend is the spirit of truth. The godless world can't take him in because it doesn't have eyes to see him, doesn't know what to look for. But you know him already because he has been staying with you and will even be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I'm coming back. In just a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you're going to see me because I am alive and you're about to come alive. At that moment, you will know absolutely that I am in my Father and you're in me and I am in you. The person who knows my commandments and keeps them, that's who loves me. And the person who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and make myself plain to him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It is a joy to share the God's word with you on behalf of our clergy community in Wisconsin. I have been blessed to serve among all of you, and humbled to carry on with the servant leadership journey. Since we've been asked to stay safe at home because of COVID-19, our clergy leaders like each of you have been under stress. They have quickly learned how to provide online worship, and they have struggled to do pastoral care while maintaining appropriate distance. This has not been easy. I praise God for their leadership. This has also been a time when lay leadership has stepped up to help congregations to be connected through the internet and telephones. I praise God for your leadership as well. The May is, is a month when many cultures celebrate family. In this country, those who have mothered us are honored. I love May because of such a strong spirit of gratitude and loving siblings. And I also love May since it was in this month 
that John Wesley had a life-changing experience at Aldersgate. There, while listening to Ruther's preface to Romans, he suddenly realized that he was loved by God, just as he was. With that love in his heart, Wesley formed the community of holiness that came to be called Methodist. We are Wesley's hearers, continuing to live in the spirit. God was with him, and God is with us. And I came to experience that love when I was 16. I grew up on an island in the northeast corner of South Korea. It was uh, on the Yellow Sea to the east of China and next to the North Korean borders. It's known as Kangwado. It's a small and historic island which has been the stepping stone in many international conflicts. As a child, I became painfully aware of conflicts of the past. When I was playing with a friend on the beach, the object he picked it up was a mine that exploded it and immediately took his life. Historic conflict is one aspect of life on Kanghua. The other is the presence of Methodism that was first brought there by an American missionary. It was through conversation with a Methodist pastor, I came and many others came to follow Jesus. The entire population of Ireland is some 68,000. There are four districts of the Korean Methodist Church and probably about 140 congregations. Jesus has led them through many difficult times. It was there that I learned that I should be connected to God daily and live with liberty, dignity, justice, and humility. Say Jesus in John's Gospel, chapter 14, verse 15 through 16, as translated it by Peterson. If you love me, show it by doing what I've told you. I will talk to the Father, and he will provide you another friend so that you will always have someone with you. This friend is the spirit of truth. I am so grateful for this promise of Jesus that God is with us. Christ was crucified, died, and was resurrected for you and me. And Jesus was rejected by his word, but through his mystical presence and living, redeeming love, we have become Easter people. COVID-19 strikes fear. It has killed some we loved. It has caused us to socially separate ourselves. This separation has become a true test and trial of our faith. The longer it continues, the harder it may become to accept our current reality with grace. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. To Jesus, those commandments are loving God and loving our neighbor. The Spirit is present with us. Listen carefully. You will hear the Spirit say, you are loved it, accepted it, and forgiven. You belong to me. I ask you, be in silence. And in that silence, listen for the voice of the Spirit. Listen again to Jesus in John, verse 18 and 19. And I would not leave you opened. I'm coming back. In just a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you're going to see me because I am alive. 
and you're about to come alive because of the spirit. Even in quarantine, we are closed in spirit, in mutual care, and in prayer. I frequently experience being closed while physically apart, especially in my relationship with my spouse, Im. She often travels to far parts of the world, but we remain close in our loving relationship. And this has taught me that it is possible to be humanly close while physically far apart. This is what we are all learning in these times, to be close in our relationships through physically apart. As a Christians, the spirit within each of us allows for a closeness, otherwise out of reach. It unites us, it blesses us. The blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Here of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed it in his blood. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, and this is my song, the praising my Savior all the day long. We are invited in these difficult times to focus with a greater intentionality on our life in the Spirit with God. The siblings in Christ, I commend you to seek spiritual depth in these challenging times. God knows you better than you know yourself. Again, listen to Jesus, verse 20. At that moment, you will know absolutely I am in my Father. And you are in me, and I am in you. It is this, the Spirit sent by God that unites us as a Christians. It is not anything we do that unites us. It is not believing the same thing that unites us. It is the presence of God that Jesus promised it that make us one in Christ. In other words, Christian unity is not a thing we create, but a gift of God to us as a spirit dwells within us. Serving among you beautiful people in Wisconsin, I am ever more convinced that the unity is God's purpose even when we have strong disagreement as to where we believe God is leading us. I continue searching in these days for where we are being led by God. In some ways, COVID-19 has made the search more difficult. In other ways, it has opened us to see new possibilities. I am imagining that United Methodist in Wisconsin will be led to live and practice the gospel, the gospel on every day and every place, not just Sundays, in building reserved for that purpose. I'm imagining that we be led to become eco-friendly, caring for God's earth as God has asked us to do. I'm imagining that we will become a people who understand that our individual welfare is inseparable from the welfare of the world. I'm imagining that we will be led to review critically how we live, what we consume, and what we claim to own in a world that belongs not us, but to God. There are many things to discern 
is learning how God is leading us. But of one thing I'm sure, as a followers of Jesus, God is not leading us to go off in separate ways because we sometimes disagree. What God has brought together, no human shall tear apart. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that all unity may one day be restored. And they will know we are Christians by our love. And by our love, they, yes, they will know we are Christians by our love. And they will know we are Christians by our love. Our love. Amen. I would like to invite us to share in a litany prayer where I will be reading the part of the leader and my wife Barbara will be leading the unison response. Let us pray together. God of life, we come to you yearning for life amidst another global crisis resulting from coronavirus. We experience death and sickness, suffering and trauma. We experience self-isolation and social distancing, quarantine and extraordinary self-care in these times of pandemic. Give us life, O oh God. You are the God of life. God of life, we bring our heartfelt laments, crying out, how long, O oh Lord, how long should we be patient? We bring our emotional and mental pains, agonies and struggles. We lift our dilemmas and ambiguities, confusions and interruption of our daily lives. Our routines are broken. Schools are closed. Restaurants and cafes are empty. And events have been canceled. We're stuck at home. In these times of scatteredness. Heal us. Give us our daily life back, O oh God. You are the God of life. God of life, we pray for all people who take care of the sick, suffering, and dying. We especially lift up all public health personnel and social workers, health educators and researchers who serve selflessly day and night to care for all in need and try to find solutions to save lives. Grant them more and more courage, wisdom, and grace so that they also take care of themselves while serving others. Give us grace, O oh God. You are the God of life. God of life, we bring people of all faiths and of no faith, all people of good will, so that everyone shall be realigned and repentant and transformed and change our lives for the love and service of neighbor. Help us to ask in our hearts how we can be good neighbors to the other, especially in times of crisis and disaster. Our churches are closed, temples are shut, pilgrimages are called off. We are trying to find new ways to reconnect. Give us community, O oh God. You are the God of life. God of life, we pray for all the leaders in power and position all those who make policies and decisions, so that they shall act prudently, yet practically, wisely, yet justly, locally, yet globally. Remind them to take care of the most downtrodden and marginalized in every society. The entire world has inexplicably experienced in a practical way that we are one humanity. We are all interdependent. We are all connected. Help us, O oh God, to engage in community, affirm the oneness of all, and leave behind all that divides our life together. You are the God of life. God of life, you have created order out of chaos, new life out of many crises. In this crisis of coronavirus too, we know that you are with us in our chaos and craziness, 
pandemic and trauma. You are with all humanity and especially with all those who struggle in this crisis. We know you in a mysterious way will transform everything into good. After coronavirus, we shall never be the same. Help us to cling on to that hope. You are the God of life. God of life, deliver us from all evil. Liberate us from all ignorance. Make us calm amidst the storm. Help us remember you call us to faith, to hope, and to love. Motivate us to accompany you in your ongoing mission, the mission of life, of peace, and of justice. Your reign come, O God, your will be done. You are the God of a new life. Amen. We're so grateful to Jerome Sahabandu for writing this prayer. And it is a basis upon which we as a people of prayer join now together to pray the prayer that Jesus taught our disciples, saying, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against you. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In this time of offering, God's love calls us to respond. We offer our hearts in prayer. We offer ourselves in presence. We offer our faith in witness. We offer our time and energy in service. We offer our spirit and resources and gifts. At this time, you are invited to offer your financial gifts to your church in whatever way works best. In addition, we invite you to consider giving to our Wisconsin Conference special Golden Cross Sunday offering. In the midst of the great challenges, our Wisconsin Conference Health and Welfare Ministries are providing vital services. Our ministries serve people all over Wisconsin, from urban to rural, from children to youth and families to older adults. One of the important ways we support our ministries is through the annual Golden Cross offering. Your gift to Golden Cross is truly a mustard seed gift. Our organizations use these gifts as matching funds to secure foundation grants and other grants that are two, three, or even four times larger than the match. Allocating the funds received based on the greatest needs, this year's offering will support Harbor House, Northcott Neighborhood House, United Methodist Children's Services, and United Methodist Hospitals Ministry. You are welcome to invest in this ministry at any time. We have set May as our month for the Golden Cross Sunday offering. Connect online to our Wisconsin Conference website at www.wisconsinumc.org and click on the donate button for Golden Cross. Thank you for supporting our health and welfare ministries. Be still my soul, the Lord is on my side. Please. 
now, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Y ahora, mis amados hermanos y hermanas en Cristo, que la gracia de nuestro Señor Jesucristo, que el amor de Dios el Padre y la comunión del Espíritu Santo sean con todos y con cada uno de ustedes. Amén.